The High Mobility Artillery Rocket System is one of the key fighting systems of the field artillery. I'm U.S. Army Captain Remington Henderson, and I flew down to Fort Chaffee, Arkansas to follow a HIMARS fire team. The members of the fire team were Staff Sergeant Omar Olivas, the launcher chief, Sergeant Rene Garcia, the gunner, and Private First Class Stephen Martinez, the driver. The crew were part of the Colorado Army National Guard's 3rd Battalion, 157th Field Artillery Regiment, and were down in Arkansas to conduct their annual crew qualifications. By the time I arrived, the battalion had already been in the field for two weeks under Army Heat Cat 5 conditions. For this reason, the soldiers were operating in a downgraded uniform to prevent heat casualties. Olivas was a bit unique from the group in terms of how and when he joined the National Guard. Most soldiers enlist in their late teens or early 20s without a college degree, but Olivas already had an associate's degree, a family, and was well established in his career when he joined. We were driving down to one of my wife's doctor's appointments, and a guards, a guards, an air guardsman actually uh, passed us on the right, and my wife could see the look on my face that, that I was like, wow, that's pretty cool still. And then she said, well, you know, you can always join the Guard. If you join the Guard, you have the opportunity to still come home every day. Um, you, you, can, you can drill on the weekends and you can still serve the community. And there was a, an armory in our sister city. And so I went over uh, and right away, I, I went ahead and filled out the application, uh, went to MEPS, you know, I, I, I took my ASVAB, and, and I, that's it, I, I was in, and that was, that was the opportunity I needed in my life. The decision to go to Arkansas came down to an effort to simulate combat better and to focus more on the fundamentals. 3rd Battalion, 157 Field Artillery is here in Fort Chaffee. Challenging terrain, challenging weather, high temperature, high humidity, closer to sea level. It's a different challenge from what they face normally in Colorado, high altitude, low humidity, lower temperatures. As artillery, we have to learn how to fight in multiple situations because the temperature, the humidity, the altitude changes how rockets and cannons fire. We have to move to different situations because when we go and we deploy overseas, we have to know how to, to deal with all those different changes. So it's important for us to do this. We also have to change people's understanding of memorizing terrain and knowing where something is. They have to know how to navigate and under situations they don't know. So we have to rotate around and change the terrain periodically to force them to think through all those soldier tasks and leader tasks to be in order to accomplish their artillery mission. The process of building a fire mission is quite extensive. It typically starts with the troops on the battlefield requesting support. From there, the request works its way up to the brigade level where it is processed and passed down to a battalion where it is then broken down to the battery level. Back at the Battery Operating Center, Staff Sergeant Dylan Bloxham, a fire direction control non-commissioned officer, was responsible for receiving those missions, processing them, and then passing them down to one of two platoon operating centers. Once these two get back to the high point, we'll start the timer for these guys. Send them out for the fire. For Olivas and his crew, their day-to-day -day responsibilities were split between maintaining their equipment and, of course, putting rockets down range. Uh, my responsibility is to ensure that my gunner receives emissions and ensures that they're verified and my driver is doing the duties that he's supposed to do with getting us on the proper heading. So that they can go directly into this and be like, oh, okay, this is the work package that they were doing and this is the fault they were running into. Being the gunner, you're basically more or less in charge of keeping up with the communications with the panel as well as all the other components that we have here in the vehicle. Primarily, I communicate with the driver so that way we can get up on our heading. So we can orientate the vehicle specifically right to where we need to be. I mean, my job as far as this vehicle is just making sure that it runs properly, doing proper maintenance on it to what I can that doesn't require a mechanic to get deeper into the engine. So checking fluids, checking oils, hydraulic fluid in the launcher, just making sure there's no cracks, breaks, bends, tears, and any hoses or anything, any leaks. Prior to firing, the entire battalion goes through several levels of safety procedures to ensure that nothing other than the intended target is destroyed. The safety test is used to verify the accuracy of the target and fire locations, the weapon and ammunition information, and the meteorological data. Together, this compiled information creates a more complete image of a rocket's flight path and mitigates the risk of a rocket drifting away from its intended target. Yeah, it's not safe. 
So we just finalized our safety T. We verified that the max QE, the min QE, left and right azimuths are ex the exact same as what our battalion's showing. That's pretty much how far left and how far right a rocket's gonna go. We're gonna be firing from this op area into this impact area, and our goal is to have every rocket land inside the target selection box, which is this little guy inside it. So now that the battery safety tee has been verified with the battalion, the launcher is now authorized to move to the ammunition holding area where they're gonna upload a live pod and they'll receive the three method of control missions in order to qualify as a HIMARS crew. The missions that the HIMARS crews are required to qualify on are designed to ensure that the unit can fire under a series of potential situations effectively. Fire when ready is for when there is an expedited need to get rounds downrange as fast as possible. At my command is reserved for when targets have been acquired, but certain conditions need to be met first. Time on target is used for when an enemy is known to be in a given location at a certain time. Artillery is any weather, any terrain, any time. As a result, the artillery has to train for both day and night operations. Despite the need for the higher precision, firing at night creates a strategic advantage over our adversaries. This is because it requires certain assets to conduct, assets that our enemies don't typically possess. For the US military, this comes down to a combination of night vision devices and the Q-53 radar which electronically follows the path of the rounds fired and ensures that they've hit their intended targets. After almost 18 hours of continuous operations on day two, Alpha Battery finished their qualifications, but Bravo Battery still had nine missions to go. Alpha Battery just finished their qualifications. We got about nine more missions to go before we're qualified. We're here until we qualify. We're committed to getting this done tonight and as quickly and as safely as we can. Fire. Fire. So we're in night number two. Right now, we've been up since 6 a.m. It's already 2,300 hours. And so we're pretty tired. So every time the weather changes or, or every time the, uh, uh, your, the position that you put the launcher in changes, um, we have to re-verify that, uh, that safety team. That kind of makes the box tighter that you shoot into, um, which requires a lot more safety protocols and preparations. And if we can do it with our non-GPS guided rockets, then we can do it with our GPS guided missiles. The battalion fired up until about 4 a.m. and then paused for an hour to rest before continuing to fire. At last, around 8.45 a.m., Bravo Battery completed their final qualifying mission. Uh, we certified this morning each and every crew on every truck, certified by roughly 0845, and uh, that, was, that was phenomenal. Uh, that, was, that was like tremendous weight off our shoulders. It's fantastic. Uh, and then just, just a little bit ago, we did a, we did a, a platoon fire, which is, which is awesome. I mean, we were, we were ecstatic when we were finished. Not only were we ecstatic, we, we had to jump out and take care of some fires that we caused um, because that's also part of the job. But uh, other than that, it was, it was phenomenal. We come back here, we all celebrate together. Uh, you know, we all drink Powerade, high five, do all that hua camaraderie stuff. Last year, both teams qualified on the familiar terrain of Fort Carson within the first day. But in Arkansas, the ever-changing weather conditions led to the process taking almost three times as long. Although strenuous, each team left with a stronger and more practiced understanding of the process than had they stayed in Colorado. The motto of the National Guard is always ready, always there. Through completing the qualifications process, the third of the 157 made good on the first half of the motto so that they are now ready to deploy at a moment's notice if it becomes necessary. Three of the 157 falls under the 169th Field Artillery Brigade, and its three other battalions undergo the same process annually. The Toad Howitzer Battalion in Michigan, the self-propelled Howitzer Battalion in Pennsylvania, 
and the sister HIMARS Battalion in Wisconsin. Also that the brigade as a whole is ready to answer the nation's call at any moment. 